everybody. Welcome to MXGP21. Milestone provided a copy of this game for me early so I can share my thoughts with you guys. Just know that that will not bias my opinion. Uh, and neither will the trips that they've sent me on the past to see some supercrosses. Honestly, I don't care. I'm here to share with you guys my thoughts on the game. And to be honest with you, going into this, I was kind of over the series. And um, just kind of sick of it right and and i don't say that to as a dig it's more just the way i felt and being honest um really quickly it's worth me sharing some things i haven't made videos for the last like six or so months which is crazy um but i've had just a lot of life going on i've had um, a new position at my job that's taken a significant amount of time and thought and learning to find a balance but more importantly i've had some health issues end up seeing like feeling like crap for a long time and then having double vision and finding out i had a brain tumor and um it's been a bit of a roller coaster i'm treating it with medicine might still have to have surgery but hoping to stay on the medicine route and it is what it is life right um i just want you guys to have a little bit of context um let's let's hop into this the career i'm not even going to dive into it but i'll tell you basically you ride you can see on the top right i'm level 22 i have completed the mxgp2 championship so i have completed all of that um it's 12 races and uh, 12 really fun races i'll be honest but um really the career is pretty basic uh not that immersive other than the racing was pretty fun um, basically you just do your races and you gain XP and that gives you levels and at certain levels you can sign contracts with different teams and um, you can also ride your own bike and upgrade it and customize it and whatnot um, I went the team route and you just slowly move up teams over the over the season and that's kind of cool and all um, they do little, these little 1v1s versus like your rival or one of the big guys on the on the calendar and he, uh, they, they move up the difficulty level. Like if you're playing on medium, it ends up being on hard. And those are actually pretty difficult. Some of them were hard to, to hard to accomplish, and some of them I just said screw it, I'm not doing this. Um, so it kind of is what it is with those, uh, and that's pretty much the career. Then you move to MXGP, and that's where I'm at now. Um, really quickly, I think it's worth sharing with you guys just getting into the gameplay. Now this screen looks a little weird with the guy's yellow helmet. It almost makes it look like he's just wearing like a road helmet or something like that um, without a visor, but it's just the colors. Um, kind of a weird look. But uh, let's hop into a race so you can see really what is it like, what is AI like, um, and, and share that with you. So let's see. We're going to ride at Keegums. We're going to ride here on this Yamaha because that's a bike that I've ridden in the past uh, in my career. This is a 250. Um, I want to share with you guys that, and then we'll move to the 450. Let's see, we're gonna ride at Keegums, and then for race options, you'll see just quick race length, AI difficulty realistic, so that's the hardest difficulty. Um, advanced physics, joint brakes off, so kinda have my, my front and my rear brake, rider weight manual, transmission manual, rewind off. So um, that's what we're dealing with. I will say that they have increased the difficulty of the AI, and I did my 250 career on medium. And uh, if I was able to get out front and not make mistakes, I was able to beat them and pull away at times. But if you let people get out in front of you, sometimes it's really hard to chase them down and obviously a little bit more difficult once we get into this realistic difficulty that we're playing now. All right, here we are on track. One thing I'll say is they have improved the starts. Uh, for some reason, I don't know how they've done it, but they've made it where it's just a little bit more fun to be kind of battling for the whole shot. Um, you can still do some of the cheaper tricks where you can let off and go down the inside, but let's go for an outside whole shot here. You can definitely still do it. Not the whole shot, but getting into second. For some reason, they've just, it's just a lot more fun. And uh, I don't know what they've changed. Maybe it's just a little bit more competitive. You can definitely loop it there, but I would say in general, looping isn't a problem like it's been in other games. I would also say sliding out um, unnecessarily can happen in this game, but it's not like MSGP Pro with uh, the advanced physics or whatever. All right, so you can see that that leader's already gone. Just because I barely made some mistakes, 
This is almost impossible to clear unless you roll it. And yet on the 450, you'll see in a bit, it is much, much easier to clear. It's important to note some of that stuff. You can see my legs flying off with some of the harder hits. In air physics right here, that's one of the canned whips, pretty much identical. And uh, always a little funky to land. Those canned whips as usual. Biggest improvement I would say of these inside berms are so much fun, especially when it's a couple corners linking them and you just uh, really nail them really, really well. It's a ton of fun. This game is definitely all about flow and getting into that rhythm. If you don't have it, you're gonna struggle. And I'm hitting some of these bigger um, raised sections that are definitely slower, but I'll switch up lines through the race the best that I, best that I can. This is kind of a cheat part here. You can just kind of cut it. Now, I really do like the balance between front and rear brake if you have joint brakes turned off. Again, that canned whip. Let me show you, eh, pushing wide here, but let me show you a little bit on, like, right here. This is kind of what some of the whips look like that are not the canned whips. But again, these berms, ooh, so sweet. Ooh, I'm glad that happened. Um, one thing you'll see is there are a lot of different, like, swaps where you'll just start getting a tank slapper. Uh, and it doesn't always make that much sense. Let's see if I can huck this gap. Nice. A little bit of a hard hit, but still, uh, that one's a possible gap on the 250, but pretty difficult to stretch. 450, it's not bad at all. I really do like the ground physics, I'll be dead honest. The air physics kind of suck as usual. The whips are terrible. Um, you have a little bit more movement now, so it's again a small improvement But I would say even if you have more movement in the air again kind of these canned whips um, You can have some look pretty cool, but most just turn out kind of wonky even the good ones look a little silly on a replay That's a canned whip you almost look better doing the canned whips than uh, your free whips but you can see these guys are pretty quick on realistic. That's why I did my uh, career on medium, and it was a really good balance. I would do it on hard next time around. Uh, I think hard is a pretty good balance, because this, it's definitely doable once you get good um, and learn how to play it. But in general, it's it, it just is what it is, where, uh, ooh, that loop. But yeah, hard's just a sweet spot. This uh, all-time or realistic is a bit of a challenge to chase people down. And that's that's the whole game. So like in my career, even on medium, the key was really to get out front and stay clean. That's still hard to clear unless you roll it. But uh, yeah, and that's really what it was all about. It was just about getting out front and staying clean and no mistakes and you have to really focus to do that so it does have that level of um, difficulty where you're really having to focus because it's easy to crash in this game and i will say if you like just do stupid stuff like that you'll swap right or if you just pin it in corners and um, sometimes that'll bite you and you'll crash um just your standard stuff but i would say this feels very similar to the previous games just with a slight improvement uh, on those ground physics, sound, the starts, um, and you have a little bit more of a free style as far as um, in air, but it's still silly. Like, look how dumb that looks. Um, sorry, Milestone, but uh, you got a lot of work to do on those in air physics. Um, 
And I, I don't think that's something that in these this block of games that they have that contract with, I don't think it's going to be something they're really going to tack um, or handle or improve that much. Uh, if they do, I'll honestly be shocked. So I think it's just something we need to know that the whips aren't going to be good. And uh, I doubt there would be ruts either. Um, so we just need to ride it for what it is. Um, I think the other real great thing on this game and all the MXGP games is just the tracks. Um, there's a lot of diversity in the tracks. Again, canned whip. Um, the diversity in the tracks is pretty sweet. The graphics, really nice. Still want to clear this by jumping it. But it's nice showing that, so then you can see the difference between the 450. I'm gonna have to roll this, basically. So you guys get the idea. Um, the AI can be difficult. Um, I've, been, I've been making lots of mistakes right now, and these guys are catching me, and the leaders are pulling away um, quite a bit. You can see boom to the left. They're already on that straightaway. So um, you can definitely have a great battle on realistic i would say a realistic career is going to be a lot more fun than previous games so that's a bonus um and i just really like that they improve the ground physics a bit it feels intuitive it feels smart it feels like it makes sense when you're sliding um when you really nail a berm it feels good it feels rewarding it's quick you can chase ai down by nailing those insides um, so it's, it's pretty great. That's a good line through there right there. A little bit of, I wouldn't say it's a cheater line, but it's kind of shooting that gap. It can backfire on you for sure. Like I said, I use the canned whips more than anything. At least they look halfway uh, real. But uh, your classic finish. I I like the game. I wouldn't say it's something that's groundbreaking or a big change. It's pretty much as you would expect. Um, some minor improvements in the ground physics, the sounds, uh, the starts are a little bit more fun, and that's a little bit more free in the in the air. But it's not that big of an improvement. So let's hop into another race. And we will ride on the 450. Let's go Cairoli. Why not? Let's ride the KTM. Um, so we'll, we'll go same race, same settings, everything, just so you can see the difference. I won't do a full race this time around, um, just a little bit. And you'll be able to see, you know, how does this bike handle? Uh, how does it sound? I will say the 450s sound pretty sweet. Um, it actually has that that deep um, bark sounds stupid, but uh, it has just that deep, nice sound to it, especially out of corners. Let's see if I can pull this whole shot. A little bit of a late jump, but now it's going to all be about how do we handle this spot here? Maybe not a whole shot, but close. Oh, we did get the holy. Oh, I was looking at the I was looking at the banner down below. Ignore that. <laughs> All right, so listen to this thing real quick once I uh, get back on track. So listen to it out of this. It just sounds cool to me. Um, it almost makes it feel like it's got that low-end power, when in previous games it's kind of just, I don't know, doesn't sound that great. Well, kind of screwed up there, my bad fellas. I've been riding the 250F. I've ridden the 450 a good bit, but I've been riding that 250F in the championship. You can just see the extra speed that this carries. The 450 is pretty freaking awesome in this game, I will say. Even just look at that, the visual of, of getting through that. 
berm is pretty sweet. Nailing these top sections, because who cares? You're on this uh, power machine. Fevra here. I feel so bad for him crashing at Paris. That happened yesterday for me. Um, what a... Oh, I cased it. Let me try the outside with him. What an absolute bummer. Um, I hope he's okay. I know he's injured, but hopefully it's not too bad. I haven't heard an update. Okay, so the sound and the improved ground physics, even though they're slight, it feels nice. It's it's quite an improvement. Oof. Like I said, that is one of the only places in the game that I've found where you can just get on the gas and loop it pretty easy. That's uh, my bad. I should be leaning forward there. Again, in-air physics. It's like this wacky, like wannabe twitch whip kind of thing and again maybe people will figure out a better way to whip but my initial impressions are as expected the in-air physics are not good in this game wow i cased that on the 450 i love this little double Ooh, i hit a little bump on the outside there Let's see if i can still i was gonna say still clear this i'm having bad luck with these uh resets but that's all me, not the game. I'm surprised I'm having that happen, but it is what it is. Ah, uh, blew that berm, but you can see how the 450 is a beast, right? I mean, it's so much different than that 250. Hopefully, you guys can see that. And with the sound, it's almost like when you're playing, you can kind of feel it a little bit more than you would normally. I'm not, uh, not riding that great, but like I said, when you get into that rhythm, man, does it feel good. I'll try to do a real, like, in-game whip. So that was probably as good as it gets right there for me. Alright, we're going to leave it at that. Some quality riding from me. Before I end the gameplay section, I almost forgot. In fact, I did forget. But I'm going to insert this here so you guys can see what the uh, rain and, and this muddy terrain is like. Um, I think they actually do a really good job of the mud. It's difficult. You're sliding around everywhere. And this is also a little peak of another track. I want to leave a lot of that to you guys as uh, kind of coming out and trying this game out. But this is Italy. Look at that sliding in the rear end on this 450 is particularly interesting in the mud. And this is a really tight, ooh, tight track. Look at the sliding in the rear end out of every corner. Pretty interesting, the water on the screen. This section's actually pretty tricky. Look at the sliding, it's crazy. And when it's on hard difficulty, or really I'm on realistic, but most difficult difficulty, it's it's pretty interesting. <laughs> these guys are quick in the mud. Oh, screwed up that berm completely. This section's pretty cool, you just huck this big jump into there too. Breaking bumps, pretty cool, right? A little sneak peek at some of these other tracks, and this is the tightest track of all. I believe. Look how much I'm sliding, it's absolutely crazy. 
Now, if you're smart, and you just roll it on and lean back early, you can keep that power down. I'll show you right now. I'll try to be a little bit smarter with the throttle. Maybe not. How about that? I'll end it there. You guys get to see an, a little bit of an idea of kind of what that uh, what that mud is like. It sure looks nice, doesn't it? All the pooling and the ruts, all the water sitting there, the water on the screen, and definitely the physics. So there you go. Let's go back to the main menu and check out some of the other little features. Um, there's a playground. We'll check that out really quick. Um, we'll just stay as Cairoli, right? This 450 is pretty badass, honestly. So you're getting to see the the game as a whole, right? You're getting to see the, the qualities, some of the negatives. Um, to me, the biggest negative is it's the same old thing, right? Same old thing. And if you're not like a... If, if you want to be super critical, maybe this does go the other way. I don't know. We'll try it this way. Um, brap, definitely goes the other way. <laughs> maybe we'll turn around. Um, if you're super critical of these games and don't enjoy them, I would say it's probably not worth picking this up because you can already tell what you're going to get, right? pretty cool that we have this little playground that's uh, got a little bit more character to it than the previous options. Um, I just really dig the uh, th knowing that this is in Wales and the scenery and whatnot it kind of makes sense. Ooh, this track's pretty cool. I actually haven't ridden this track. As you can tell from me going backwards. Well, ooh, you actually have to rail that outside. It's kind of cool. Just the sound of this thing is quite the improvement. So that's an in-game whip. That was a great way to show that. Not, uh, sorry, that's not the one of the canned whips. That's like just a free whip, basically. So they can look cool, and I'm sure some people will really figure it out. For me, it's still kind of meh. And I wouldn't say it's anything that would be that uh, worth telling other people about. Again, I'm trying those game whips. Free whips. Pretty cool track here. I'm like shocked how cool this track is. The elevation. Into this berm. Huck it into another berm. There we go. We cleared it that time around. I had to do a uh, big preload. Um, just to mention those preloads, it's very much like the Super Cross games, right? So you, you preload with both sticks down and then up. And that gives you the big preload, as you can see there, right? Or you can just do it with the one stick, or just lean back. You know, it's exactly like the Supercross games. So you have options to do a bigger preload, or no preload, or kind of a half preload. Which is kind of nice. As expected, though. Alright, so, that's that track. What else do we have around here? Like I said, I... Have spent very little time here. This is the waypoint mode. Here you can set your imagination. Yep, I get it. So you can create a waypoint race. Okay, that's kind of cool. But let's check out this area before looking at customizations. And we have the track editor as well. Oh, can't go there. Get a little single track going. A little trail riding. Oh, that's a pretty cool trail, actually. Yeah, I think it's definitely an improved free ride area. This is pretty sweet, actually. Let's see. Nope. 
Let's go into first person here so you guys can see a little bit of that. Ooh, getting a little bit of lag. Oh, tree. <laughs> oh, we're, we're going to check this out. All right, let's see. Okay, there's... Let's do the goggle cam. I'll be honest with you, I just hit my button to sit or stand, like in Sim or MX Bikes, because of this view, because I play in first person, but... Dude, these trails are sweet. I'm not staying on them very good, but the trails are pretty cool. Let's let's see what the uh, track is like here with first person with the goggles on. Inside rut or berm, sorry. Ah, uh, I wanted to nail that berm. You just can't really see what the bike's doing very well. I wish it had a different field of view. I'm not sure if that's something you can change or not. Whip. Oh god, you tilt your head. So... Not that big of a fan of it, but there's a good view of it. Looks like there's a few tracks around. Um, you guys can explore that on your own. At least you guys kind of know what's in the game. We're going to take a really, really quick Wanna look at the track new? editor. The track ed Four different areas. The quarry. And this is all areas in that... Uh, free ride area i believe as you move around the quarry let's let's try apple orchard here um just so you can kind of see how this works i think it's very similar to how it's been done in the past um and in the supercross games right the cool thing about the mxgp games is how the terrain kind of moves for you as you set up objects and build your track so i think it adds a good bit of flexibility to what you're trying to do so, boom, there's your start, and then you have your options for all the different degrees of corners, as you'd expect. Some different straightaway lengths, pretty obvious, pretty basic. Let's see what's at the end here. Okay, your jumps. We can check out, oh, interesting. So that just shows your uh, difference in heights. Um, that's kind of cool to see the terrain. It's almost like a top topograph, top 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 of Tio. Um, some specials. It's almost identical to Supercross, but let's see um, a little bit better up close on what some of these jumps are. So. That's kind of cool, just like a big old roller, kind of a roller with potentially a tire tap on it. Different size jumps. Sorry, the camera's doing some weird stuff because of the tree right here. Let me move over here. Maybe it's just doing the weird stuff in general. Different types of jumps and tables, big sections of jumps with tables in them, whoops one side or the other. It's basically the Supercross track builder. And the little special stuff where you can put like a hole in the ground. It's exactly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks exactly like the Supercross Track Builder. Hmm, interesting. Now, that's not always a bad thing, because you can make a uh, outdoor track with those options. So it's not all bad, but interesting, right? That it's the same, kind of copied over. Um, that's that, multiplayer pretty much normal there customization really quick this is the last thing we'll check out let me know in the uh 
let me know in the comments if you want to see something specific in the game or if I didn't answer something, I can try to answer that below. Um, all the different bikes here, including TM and Gas Gas. We have this Fantic, just whatever. Um, Beta, pretty cool to have this in there, and it's the RX. So pretty cool set of bikes um, and you have all the top ones right so you have the RW and um, pretty sweet there to be able to buy different bikes I guess I should buy something that I want you know what maybe I will ride that beta right I've got some money name for this pose I mean uh, okay beta beta one I don't know okay So we can open this up and then you can mess with your rider or your bike. We're looking at bike first here. Painting, it's just same thing. You can change the color of different components. If I hit the bumpers, um, you can change to different pieces on the bike that you can change the color. It's kind of nice because you can switch between stuff super quickly, change the color. Um, so you could fly through those options pretty quickly. Um, as you go over to graphics, livery you have to purchase these different graphics some pretty cool options for the beta some weird ones as well kind of as expected and then left trigger right trigger to be able to switch between um, so that's those graphics you can change your plate and that usually is is just the numbers but um, yeah, kind of sizing and whatnot. We'll go a little bit bigger. Why not? Number plates, it's the same thing. You're just changing the numbers, right? Okay. Components. That's the one everybody wants to see. Big list of hand guards. And look at all the different companies here. And if you hit those triggers, it switch between them all. So lots of options as usual. Bumpers change your um, different component. And again, the triggers change to different brands. Lots of different brands as usual. Bar pads, grips, some wild stuff. What, what brand did those? I saw some like zebra ones. It wasn't the MX. I'm losing my mind. Different suspension. Pretty much the standard. I'm not seeing anything. Maybe there's some more options as I'm not going that deep. Definitely some wild options here. <laughs> it's cool. They give you lots of customization. Sprockets front and rear, seats, exhausts, kind of cool, and back to hand guards. So pretty much as, as expected um, with the rider, everyone wants to see this as well. Helmets, lots of different brands, let's get maybe a better view here. Moving through brands right now, FXR, HJC, all kinds of stuff. Laser, Liat, O'Neill, Shift, Showy, Thor, Troy Lee, all kinds of stuff. Goggles. Am I? Okay, you gotta go up for these right now. Lots of different goggles. Hmm, good bit of neck braces. That's not too bad. A lot of games don't have very many. All kinds of jerseys as you would expect. I'm just going through brands right now so you can get a little bit of a taste. There's some that I don't even know. Huh. Boots. Damn. All the different options here. Garnet. 
feel like there's definitely some added brands, but um, and so that's everything that you can add. Um, you can change your information, but that's pretty basic. Who you are, what you look like, that kind of stuff, I think. Um, but yeah, so I think the takeaway here is it's the same game with some slight improvements. To me, those improvements really are the ground physics are just slightly more improved, a little bit more intuitive. They feel a little bit more realistic, I guess, in the way that... Um, it's predictable. It makes sense what's happening in most situations, right? There's still the random like, oh, I slid out or something weird happened that maybe didn't make sense, but there, it's it's not that often. You can control it, and most of the time it's because you're overriding or you're trying too hard and you're leaning on the arcade physics too much, and sometimes that just breaks on you. So um, the other thing I would say, the AI is improved. Uh, that's pretty nice. The sounds are a little bit better. The starts are a little bit more fun. Uh, which is which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, just in, in general, I think it's just a slightly improved game. Uh, I do like how the bikes feel on the ground. I hate how they feel in the air. Um, pretty typical game. Customizations spot on. Graphics are great. Um, overall, I think I'd give this game a C if I had to give it an actual grade. Um, and mainly because it's so predictable. Right? Small improvements, but it's the same old game, and it, eventually that gets old. Uh, I assume Milestone's doing everything they can with the small time frame that they have to try to improve these games and, and, and keep them coming out. Um, an outdoor and a Supercross game every year, that's, that's quite a bit. Um, I will say I'm happy that we have these Motocross and Supercross games. Um, there was a period where we didn't have any for a long time. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to have these every year. And if you can afford to buy these games, I think there's a good bit of fun in them. Um, if you're maybe struggling and it's kind of hard to fork out the money for these games, it might be worth skipping some. But I would say this is one of the better iterations. And I would say this is the best MXGP, in my opinion. A lot of people go back and say, MXGP 2 is really great because of the there were ruts and things like that. And it's like, go back and play that game. I know I went back and played it, and it does not feel as good as I remembered. There is some high... There, there is an improvement in this game, right? To me, this is a really great iteration. But it's very predictable, and it's uh, it's like the it's like we've played the same game multiple years in a row with slight improvements. And that's not a dig. It's just exactly what it is. So take it for what it's worth. Um, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, these are always a little bit longer videos, but it's important for me to share my thoughts, my feelings, and show you some gameplay, customization, track editor, uh, and that open free playground is what they call it. Uh, hopefully that gives you a better idea on if you want to buy this game or if you want to skip it. I wouldn't blame you either way. Just know that there is some fun to have in here and we need to celebrate having motocross and supercross games coming out every year it is what it is spend your money how you want but that's my opinion let me know what your thoughts are below thank you for your time and i will talk to you later peace